Welcome to FOMO Consulting for your daily AMC stock analysis video on Monday, May 17th. Ladies and gentlemen, the hedgies are on the run. They are running tonight. I'm sure everyone is glued to their screens watching the price action. It's an exciting evening. And as always, as evidenced by the price action, the apes are winning, the diamond hands are winning, and most importantly, the retail investor is winning. So if you find this video informative and entertaining, please like, share, comment, and certainly subscribe. It is a newer channel, and I'd appreciate the support. Let's get into the video. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart for everyone who has liked, shared, commented, and subscribed. It means the absolute world to me. Thank you. So let's look at this beautiful picture. That is the Grand Canyon in the United States of America, a majestic sight, no doubt. So let's start with a quote. A river cuts through rock, not because of its power, but because of its persistence. Jim Watkins. No doubt we are cutting through the rock of all the walls, of all the cell walls, of the hedge funds manipulation tactics, the FUD, everything we've been through. We are slowly but surely cutting through the rock of the wall they have built to keep us from launching. Our persistence is paying off even this evening. So let's look at the broader market today. Overall, relatively neutral. All three major indices down, nothing crazy uh, down, but again, tech took a hit. Uh, semiconductors continue to be uh, problematic, obviously. Uh, just kind of random overall mixed market today. Uh, AMC certainly uh, outperformed the market and is continuing, continuing to do so this evening. So what I want to do is start with exactly what you all are probably watching tonight, which is the price action. And again, I'm sure it's changed since this video has been recorded. But those few candles in the highlighted box represent about two and a half million in total volume. So no doubt there is covering going on after hours. And I'll show you uh, something more substantial here shortly. So this is this morning's pre-market. What you're looking at on the top yellow arrow is 4 a.m. As soon as trading opened at 4 a.m., we had a huge, huge spike. Huge spike in volume, huge spike in buying. It was an exciting morning, and we pretty well consolidated, give or take, throughout, and then we rocketed at the open yet again. And then we got shorted down, and everyone knows the story. So let's rewind the tape back to late January. Same exact thing happened. We had the big 4 a.m. spike, huge spike in volume. And then we ran up and everyone knows the story. We actually hit our very highest price point pre-market around 9, 9.15 a.m. before market opened at $25.80. Moral to the story is don't go to sleep too early and don't wake up too late. You might miss it. So let's look at the 28th. So what you're looking at left to right is the end of the trading day on the 27th. The price fell off at close around the 8 o'clock hour to $11.00. I'm sure everyone was bummed, thought it was all over with, and then the following morning, it rocketed right back up to $23. Again, this is where days to cover comes in very, very handy. Right now, I believe, based on the data, we are in the three to four day range. So again, don't go to bed too early and don't sleep too late. Yet one more view, our recognized intraday uh, high price of $20.36 actually occurred at the very opening bell, 9.30, and then it fell off from there. It did recover up to $19.65 end of day, but as you can see, the pre-market and post-market after hours is when we tend to have our most volatility. So, thank you, Melissa, for bringing this up. Halting. Some of you have never done this before. Some of you have never been involved with this before. Some of you have never seen what a trading halt is. It's basically based on volatility. 
uh, it throws circuit breakers and it usually lasts anywhere between five possibly ten minutes and it can recur uh, multiple times throughout the day throughout if it is a volatile situation uh, furthermore it can be implemented at any time during the day pre post and intraday so let's look at the definition at, uh, based on investopedia a trading halt is a temporary suspension of trading for a particular security or securities at one exchange or across numerous exchanges trading halts are typically enacted in anticipation of a news announcement to correct an order imbalance as a result of a technical glitch or due to regulatory concerns when a trading halt is in effect open orders may be canceled and options still may be exercised but keep in mind if there's a trading halt in a lot of ways that's a good thing because it gives everybody a chance to take a breath and uh, you know you can kind of game plan your next move so it's actually a good thing or it can be so let's look at amc today we closed at a phenomenal $13.95 up 97 cents, 7.47%. Again, Friday, we needed to kind of cool off uh, trading generally flat, but green was fantastic. It set us up beautifully. We exercised or put about 93,000 uh, contracts in the money on the call side. Uh, not sure if those were all exercised today, but we certainly had a lot of bullish price action after hours, as everyone I'm sure is aware. Uh, we're at $15.71 or up $1.76. Uh, not sure where we'll land at 8 p.m., but we'll see. I'm sure it'll be exciting. But overall, the stock did phenomenally today, start to finish. And as you can see, it somewhat followed the broader market. Um, so overall, I could not be happier. I'll take 7% every day. As a matter of fact, I was anticipating maybe a 3 to 5% day. 7% uh, exceeded my expectations, and I'm more than happy. And the after hours action has been more than exciting. So let's look at a bigger view. So this is the hourly chart. Over the last uh, week or so, week and, week and a half, we are clearly on an uptrend as evidenced by the red uh, trend line I just threw on here. Um, what's most important is the volume. Volume has picked up substantially over our recent averages. So let's look at the weekly candles. You can clearly see we're on an uptrend and as evidenced by what I've been talking about the last two days, the alligator's mouth is wide open. He is hungry and ready to eat. Feed the gator. So if you want some money making music, it's been a fantastic day, fantastic evening. Crank up some tunes. No doubt uh, they are in our jungle now. They are in the ape-filled jungle, and they are scared to death and running as fast as they can. No doubt. So real quick, I'll show you an indicator for those that uh, are new to the channel, those that uh, have been on here a few days, I apologize. Uh, Williams Alligator Indicator, legendary trader Bill Williams, an early pioneer of market psychology, developed the trend following Alligator Indicator, which follows the premise that financial markets and individual securities trend just 15 to 30 percent of the time while grinding through sideways ranges the other 70 to 85 percent of the time. Williams believed that Individuals and institutions tend to collect most of their profits uh, during strongly trending periods. Three moving averages, jaw, teeth, and lips. So the jaw is a blue line. Starts with a 13-day smooth moving average. The teeth, red line. Eight-day smooth moving average. Lips, green line. Five-day smooth moving average. Obviously, both, all three have different sensitivities based on uh, their uh, extended period of days right uh, five day will move quicker than the uh, 13 day which is the jaw let's look at it an indicator applies convergence divergence relationships to build trading signals with the jaw making the slowest turns and lips making the fastest turns the lips crossing down through the other lines uh, signals a short sale opportunity while crossing upward signals a buying opportunity Williams refers to the downward cross as the alligator sleeping, as the upward cross as the alligator awakening.
The alligator, quote unquote, sleeps for some time before a new awakening signal goes off and up train commences with another, quote unquote, eating with open mouth, close quote, fade. So let's review what this looks like. So the gator woke up, he got hungry, we had the baby squeeze. As you can see, his mouth opened up late January. He closed it again, took a quick nap, he opened it again, got very hungry, ran up until mid-March. So let's look at the hourly chart for the last uh, couple of weeks or so. As you can see, uh, when we were down trending in that $9 channel, $10 channel, alligator was sleeping. He has recently woke up last week. As you can see, his mouth opened up and he is eating going upwards. No doubt we are in a very good position. Let's take another look. So this is the daily chart zoomed in. We are clearly up on the uptrend as evidenced by the red trend line. MACD is clearly in uh, bullish territory at this point. Uh, you can definitely see the alligator's mouth just opened, and we are now heading upwards by the yellow arrow, green arrow again, MACD. So let's look at what they were up to today. They actually returned 7 million shares. No surprise. They've been playing around with these 5 million shares for the last few weeks. They've uh, certainly returned more, but keep in mind, the more they returned, the more they can borrow. So let's look at the Ortex data and other key uh, statistics here. Exchange reported short interest is about the same. Estimated percent of uh, free float has gone down just a bit at 19.39. Percent free float on loan, 32.19, has gone down since Friday. Shares on loan has gone down since Friday at 146.91 million. That's a good thing. Days to cover on loan has gone down 1.57. I'll show you why that's important. Cost to borrow has gone down just a little bit at 18.76 and utilization is still extraordinarily high at 99.60. I have no doubt, very likely tomorrow that will be back at 100. We had 146 million in total volume, 414 institutional investors are involved in AMC and they now have 1.4 million short shares available. That's a good thing, at least for now. And the short borrow fee, fee per Fento is at 24.14%. Again, a good thing. If you look over on the far left, yellow arrows, institutional ownership has gone up substantially. We've been around the 10% mark for quite some time. The other category, which is technically the retail investor, has been anywhere between 72 to 80 percent uh, for at least a month, if not longer. That percentage has gone down, certainly because institutional ownership has gone up. Uh, institutions are buying in very heavily right now. They are increasing their positions substantially, as evidenced by 13F filings. So this is from Ortex, and what I want you to look at, this is a six-month look. The yellow uh, indicator, or the trend line I drew down at the bottom, is the shares, or borrowed share volume. Okay, the gray, all the gray bars are borrowed share volume. All the short shares are borrowed. You look to the left to right, you can see where the density and height of those volume bars are substantial. That meant they had a ton of shares to borrow and they shorted us down and kept us down. If you going forward, middle of chart, the middle of March, you can see where they rocketed up. They exited their positions and they borrowed a bunch of shares simultaneously, very high levels of borrowed share volume. Moving forward over to the far right, you can see where we got up to around $12.20 a couple of weeks ago. They had some shares to borrow. If you look right where we ended on Friday, and this is a day behind always, they have no shares to borrow. They are out of ammunition, which is why we're able to run now. They cannot hold this back much longer. Additionally, the yellow arrows uh, show where the short data trend lines are all 
starting to exit. If you look uh, at the red trend lines I've drawn, that is where the uh, shorts have exited their positions by rising price action. You can see where the trend data falls off substantially. They borrow shares and they short us back down after the price cools off. They do not have that ability right now because there are no shares to loan. Let's look at a closer view. This is about a three month look. You can see mid-March, they quickly exited their positions. You look to the far right, they are now exiting their positions, which is why the short interest uh, numbers in Ortex and other places are now falling because they are exiting, they are running. They do not have the shares as indicated by the yellow volume, uh, borrow share volume at the bottom. There is just not enough shares to hold us back. So as I've said a million times uh, for weeks now, uh, the 14, 14, 50 level is absolutely essential. We break these walls, we break that, we stand on the rubble and we claim victory. I personally am not prepared to claim that yet because again, they have the 7 million shares at their disposal. We have historically had nice green Mondays. Middle of the week, I believe, is where the fight will land. So we need to stay vigilant, keep the buying pressure on. Again, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This is my opinion. But if we can get rid of those walls, we will go to the moon. So let's look at the uh, largest options purchases for today. Some really big dollars, uh, some May 21st uh, puts. At a ten and a half dollar, these are most likely hedges. Uh, all of these big dollars that you see, but there is a substantial amount of calls expiring this week between sixteen and twenty dollars. Overall sentiment in the uh, options market today nearly uh, three to one, which is always very good. Exceptionally bullish. We are in a great position. So let's look at the options chain expiring this Friday. The red trend lines uh, are kind of my extremes, uh, down to around 10 or as high as 16. I've adjusted this just a little bit since yesterday uh, with the updated information. The yellow is evidence cautionary zone that I believe we could uh, be in. I believe uh, more importantly at this point, we could cross that $15 level, putting a lot of options in the money. Green, I believe, is the battlefield that we're playing for this week. That is a lot of options. That is close to 100,000 contracts in the money if we can close above 14 on Friday. So everyone loves to see this. So this has increased substantially over the last few days. We were actually under $100 uh, over the last couple of weeks, it has come down, but we are now trending way back up to a potential $160 a share. It's always fun to look at. I don't really buy it. <laughs> GME. Hey, that's pretty good. 59, almost $6,000 a share as of right now. So if you're holding GME, you should feel pretty good after today. It was a great day for GME as well as AMC. So as always, I have skin in the game. Uh, we win together, we lose together. I am in this diamond hand, same as you. I've bled and I have uh, had green days, just like you. So again, my bold prediction is between 13 and $14, and I know everyone wants to go to the moon, and we may very well. However, based on the options and the weekly battles that we always seem to get into, uh, we seem to get shorted as the week goes on or we consolidate and then Friday we get into the battle uh, for one level or another around the options. We may very well trend up towards the 15, 16 level. I'm just not sure, but the concentration right now, the smart money is in the 13 to 14 level and that's where I am looking. So let's read a quote. If you're offered a seat on a rocket ship, don't ask what seat, just get on.
by Cheryl Sandberg. Ladies and gentlemen, I will ride shotgun, and I will see you on the moon soon, I have no doubt. So if you found this video informative and entertaining, please like, share, comment, and certainly subscribe. It means the world to me as I am a new channel. But overall, thank you very much, and as always, I hope your life is full of green candles. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.